you know, uh, it was very difficult to shoot. It took Blessy 16 years. Uh, Raj, pretty much the same. Me, a bit less. Uh, it was a label of love uh, based on a true story. And, uh, and yeah, uh, very, very happy to be, to be here in India and to be part of, uh, of what I guess, if you say Indian cinema, yes, it is. And uh, thank you for having me. Old, old time is the life of uh, of Najib. He's the star of the of, of the thing, you know. I mean, really, without him, there is no movie. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Opportunity to bring Malayalam cinema to Karnataka, and I'm very happy about that. Uh, for people who have been keeping track of our promotional campaign for the film, I'm assuming this is going to be a done to death story. But I believe I owe the courtesy to my media friends in Bangalore to take you through a small recount of how this film came into being. <clears throat> so this, of course, by now you all know, is a true story. It's the life of Mr. Najib Mohammed, uh, who, following a series of unfortunate circumstances, got stuck in a desert in the Gulf in the early 90s and had to spend almost three and a half years in forceful confinement under forced labor, pretty much modern day slavery. Uh, till he managed to incredibly escape from the desert. And later on in 2008, following months and years of research and documentation, Benny Amin, the author, finally documented the man's life into a beautiful novel called R.G. Vidam. It was published first in 2008, and as soon as the first edition came out, the novel was a smash hit. It became almost pop culture in Kerala. And as we speak today, it is still being published and we are now on the 251st edition. So as soon as the novel came out, I think the first set of people to be really thinking about the novel were cinema people. Because it immediately came across that this would make an epic piece of, film, piece of cinema. And I know personally that back then in 2008, early 2009, a lot many filmmakers, a lot many actors, a lot many producers, not just from Malayalam cinema, but from other languages as well, had their eyes on R.D.G. within the novel to try and procure the rights. But as destiny would have it, it was Mr. Blessy who managed to get the rights. And as my luck would have it, Mr. Blessy thought it was me who should be playing Najib in his dream film, his magnum opus. And that happened in early 2009 when Blessy sir and me shook hands and we decided that we are going to do this film. So remember back in 2009, Pan-India did not exist. You know, the word had not yet been invented. But we still knew all those years ago that eventually when we were able to do this film, we want to try and attain the vision that Blessed Sir had in his mind. And he always thought of this as a big canvas, grand scale film. And we always knew that whenever the film was ready, we would love to have it released all across the country, all across the world, at least in five languages from India. It took us 10 years to finally start shooting because the scale and the canvas of the film was so big that in 2009 it was next to impossible to think of something like this from Malayalam. So it took Blessed Sir 10 years to finally bring about all that was needed to do something like this. In 2018 we started shoot and uh, unfortunately in between the shoot, COVID-19 happened and the world came to a standstill and we had to stop shoot. We were shooting in Jordan when the international lockdown happened and we had to stop shoot. Not only did we have to stop shoot, our entire team comprising of 80 to 100 people, uh, we were stuck in Vadiram in the middle of the desert in Jordan for almost three months till we managed to get a repatriation flight to come back to India. The shoot was suspended for almost a year and a half to two years till we finally managed to regroup go back to Algeria, shoot the escape portions of the story. Then we came back to Jordan. We finished what we could not shoot when we went there in 2020. And then we came back to Kerala, did a few patchwork scenes that we had to inside sets. And finally the film got wrapped. Its principal cinematography got wrapped. Following that, there was a year and a half of post-production. And as we sit here on the 28th of March, a 16 year long journey, most likely one of the toughest films to have ever been made, 
at least to my knowledge and a very very challenging piece of cinema is being presented before you and i'm so happy that we have managed to bring the film to the audience in five languages and of course when it came to the kannada version i did not even have to think <laughs> with hombale and me we are we are friends we are co associates and vijay kirigandu sir is a very close friend frankly i did not ask him if he will distribute the film i told him you are distributing the film and uh, him being him he said okay uh, we have worked as hard as we can in the kannada version as well we have tried to create uh, as much of originality keeping the malayali culture and nativity within the film for the audience who would like to see the film in kannada and i have once again attempted the misadventure of dubbing it in kannada as well so when you watch the film pardon the bad kannada uh, and uh, i really look forward to hearing what you think of this passion project that we are presenting before you on the 28th of march once again thank you for being here can get me after 20 <laughs> a small explanation how was the process I don't like to speak before the film. That's my policy also. <laughs> How difficult was it uh, mentally to prepare for this uh, character? Did you meet him in uh, in person? And uh, what was the preparation actually? Did you went through mentally for this character? So this is an interesting anecdote that I've shared with media and friends all over. That at the very, so Mr. Naji was always accessible. was there and he's a good friend of Benjamin in the writers and Mr. Blessy sir also knows him quite well i could have met him spoken to him at any point in time but we made a conscious decision very beginning blessy sir and me that uh, i will not meet him uh, because my endeavor as an actor i believe is to recreate the najib in the script that blessy sir has written not to meet the real najib and try and create an imitation of the person so my performance is largely and in fact solely based on what is written on the script plus whatever information i wanted in terms of what must that person have felt what would he have gone through what were the circumstances that led into each situation all that is very detailed in the book the book is quite detail it's a 43 chapter long book in malayalam and i also had access to benyamin the author who had spent months with najib before writing the book so there really wasn't any information that wasn't available to me so we thought it would be a very interesting exercise to do the film and the first time i spoke to mr najib is on the last day of shoot after finishing the last shot of the film after doing the last shot of the film I went behind the camera and for the first time I spoke to Najib at length and a large bit of that conversation we have recorded we have shot and between Najib and me and I think we'll release it sometime yeah Thank you sir <laughs> By the way the book is also available in Kannada it is also translated into Kannada and I I would actually encourage all of you to read it anyway uh, so yeah this At the very beginning, Professor and me knew that the biggest challenge we have in front of us is this hugely popular book that lakhs and lakhs of people have read, and also two things that we understood and realized at the very beginning itself is that one, we cannot recreate the book as such because literature has the liberty of micro detail. Right? I mean, a moment in Najib's life could be twenty pages. It also has the liberty of doing the opposite. like months of najib's life could be just one paragraph so writing on print uh, has that liberty that usually cinema does not at least it doesn't lend itself well to cinema so we can't recreate the book as such if we were to make a film on everything and uh, all the information in the book it would be like a 12 or 13 hour long film so that we can't do secondly one thing we always knew was we cannot question the reader's imagination like when you read the book you would have imagined a najib you would have imagined a masra you would have imagined your version of the desert we can't show you a film and tell you you were wrong that we can't do no uh, 
So you can't challenge the reader's imagination. So then what can we do? What we can do is we can probably attempt to create the emotional journey of the character. We can try and attempt a visual manifestation of the emotional arc of the character. So what you feel when you read the book is what we hope you will feel when you see the film. But it's a completely different experience when you're actually seeing it manifest visually in front of you. And uh, one of the most moving moments for us as a team is when the real Najib saw the footage of the film and his eyes teared up and he kept, kept saying, Ella, or like uh, everything came rushing back to memory, everything came rushing back to memory. So uh, I can imagine as traumatic as that must have been for him, for us, it's, it was like a great affirmation that, you know, if not exact, we got pretty close to what the man must have lived through. Precisely the same. The fact that he was a Malayali is not making a difference to the story at all. The greatest thing about stories regarding the resilience of the human spirit is that it is beyond language, beyond region, beyond nativity, beyond religion, beyond everything. Uh, and that quality is there in the film also. Uh, when you see the film, you will realize that only about 20 to 30 percent of the film has any language. After that, for the Longest part of the film, it's just this one man, his solitude, the desert, the animals. And then for another big part of the film, it's just these two people. And in the film, these two characters do not understand each other. Najib does not understand uh, what Ibrahim Khadri, Jimmy's character, is telling him. And vice versa. But even then, there is no communication lost between them. And that's the same quality that the film hopes to achieve. I truly believe that, yes, we went through the effort of making sure there are five linguistic versions available for people to watch. But I truly believe this film is beyond language because the story is such. Yes. Sir, is anybody... I haven't. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll show the film to Prashant and Vijay very soon. Yeah. Last Hi, question, please. Last Hi. Question. So, yeah, I mean, last evening, Mani sir, uh, the first two people to see the film were Mani Ratnam sir and Kamal Hassan sir. They watched it last evening. Yeah. What was uh, Prithvi sir. They said it was very good. But when you invite people to see a film, they usually don't say anything bad. <laughs> 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 <laughs>